roofs, issues here, parapets, drain penetrations, these are all things that need to be very well detailed that aren't really typical in residential construction. So where is your air barrier on the parapet? Is it, is it going to run, as, as kind of indicated in this photo, it runs up and over the parapet and back down and ties in with the roof structure, which isn't horrible, but if your interior wall is really where we're hoping the air barrier is, you might just want to make it along that ceiling plane. So then you have your, in your air barriers on the interior of this building. So it's just a matter of coordinating that from the very beginning, that has to be in your mind. Where's my air barrier going to go? How does it connect all around the building? Um, this roof drain, you can see how they had to taper the insulation down. Well, that needs to be considered. Your consultant might say, well, you need a minimum of six inches of foam any, anywhere. So if you're going to taper down to a minimum of six inches, what is it over here to get your drainage where you need it? And also, drain lines is cold. It's just open to the outdoor air. You've got snow melt water coming down. That has to be insulated properly and isolated from the interior of the structure if it's going through the center of the structure. Okay, so these are all all specific really to these types of buildings. You, you can have this construction in, in single family, but it's not, it's not as typical. Um, foundations also present a problem. Um, you have huge compressive loads at the base of foundation. Um, the project I'm working on, they're saying they're as high as 5,000 PSI. You can't put extruded polystyrene under that footing, right? And you probably don't even have a footing. This is a residential building. What you have are massive caissons that are going down into the ground, depending on your soil um, report and all of that. So, you know, under slab insulation, can you even get any under slab insulation or do you have so many huge penetrations that are going deep into the ground that you, it's not even worth to try and get under slab insulation? So these are things that we've had to go back to actually, not a code issue, but to the passive house people and say, is this okay with you? We're not going to insulate under our slab. Is this okay? Now, you would think from a passive house perspective, no, that's, not, that's impossible, right? It's an, a thermos. The idea of passive house is you're building a thermos out of your building, insulation all the way around it, no thermal bridges. Well, the consideration is, are people living on that level? Are they going to be walking around in stocking feet? If the answer is yes, they're not going to hear about no, no insulation under that floor. If you've got carpeting on it and things like that, they don't want to hear it because they don't want any condensation problems, they don't want any comfort problems, anything like that. If it's just lobby, okay, there's some leeway, right? There's some leeway. If you can meet your energy budgets and remove that insulation, then and it's more practical, then, then there's leeway there. But it's going to be project specific for you. And there's no... Right now, where we are in the process with Passive House, where it's just ramping up and we're just starting to do the first few big buildings in the city, we don't have a common questions and answers section, and yet we don't have a resolution section like you'll find for USGBC, right? If somebody got a resolution on something, there's the answer for you, here's how you handle it. There's nothing like that yet. Hopefully we'll get to that point in the next couple of years, but it's really, uh, it's time intensive right now depending on your project. I'm, I'll be quite upfront about it. <clears throat> A lot of design time. Um, okay, so that's slabs. 